Uh, welcome to 169 episodes of this mess <laughs> called The Crafty Boys, but that's okay. I like it. If 169, do, dudes! Dude, did you notice the email I sent? That had, yeah. Anyway, never mind. So, um... Uh, why am I talking? I don't know. Dave, shut up. Hello. Shane, be quiet. Alan, speak. What beer did you pick? We have this week uh, picked a beer that I tried about a year and a half ago, and I've been wanting to do it on the show. I uh, wasn't too sure if we could all be able to get it, and apparently we've all we failed in, in that regard this week. But it's from Moody Ales, and it's called the Vienna Amber Lager. The reason why I picked this beer is because, I mean, we're not big fans of lagers necessarily here on the program. And um, I had an opportunity to try this one with uh, Locke, actually, at uh, the Drake Eatery um, maybe a couple of summers ago. The and Drake I was Eatery. I was surprised at how good it actually was. So I'm trying it here on the show, see Whoa. what you guys think. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alan, you totally froze. You were like, a blood, blood. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just continued. It was just like, it was a bit shocking. Sorry. I don't oh, know. Okay. Keep, go keep going. All right. So uh, let's, let's give it a try. Now, unfortunately, Dave couldn't get it in his neck of the woods because he lives in Black Creek and there's nothing there. Um, That's right. So, so Dave, we're not going to talk uh, about that here. Rocking tonight. I picked up uh, because I thought it was, you know, vaguely in the spirit of this evening. Anyways, invasion of the Blackberry Lager. Looks cool. Well, at it's, least it's a um, lager. Red Arrow. Yes, I thought, well, at least if I can do lager type thingies. That's really dark for a lager. Look at that. Exactly. Wow. And it's quite, quite pungent. Now, if I go on it's the, pungent. If I go on the Moody Ales website, I can learn that this particular beer was uh, finished second place in the uh, 2016 BC Beer Awards for International Lager, so it won a silver. Uh, and the explanation that goes with this is Robin, our, our, who created our Vienna Lager recipe, likes to pair this beer with Bratwurst. Show, another Moody Ales brewer, prefers it with carnitas, that, which makes sense because this style originally developed in Vienna in the, in the 1840s, lost popularity in Europe over the 19th century, but then thrived in Mexico with Austrian emigrant brewers. So as you enjoy our malt forward yet clean amber lager, remember that from, Austri from Austria to Mexico to Canada, pork and beer unite us all. And that's true, isn't it? Well, uh, it is true because around these parts in the building in which I live, there is this thing called Porky Saturday where uh, we buy pork and then we share it uh, with our neighbors to, uh, you know, we grill it or whatever. And I mean, it doesn't happen as often right now because it's getting cold. But uh, during the summer and throughout the spring, holy cow, man, there is pork in this, them, our woods. So, so the first uh, thing I noticed we when when I pour this thing is how great the head is on it. Yeah. Uh, mine is pretty thick. epic. It's, it's smaller thick. than it was, but it's good. Yeah. Very dark. Um, flavorful, uh, a very malty, uh, a bready kind of, uh, flavor, not a typical lager, like, like you would find, you know, like with those cheap beers or anything like that. This is, yeah, because only only Dave lager. likes to buy cheap beer. Yeah. What do you What do you Isn't think that... of Dave, uh, Shane? I am liking it. It has got a nice flavor to it. Uh, malty, as you said, was kind of the way to describe it. And uh, some just went up my nose. <laughs> but um, it's got a very nice taste to it. It's got like a I don't know. How do you describe it other than it's it's got a bit of a sweetness to it. 
I find. It has like a mild speed. It's like right on the bottom end, though. Like it's not so sweet going in, but once it's gone uh, down the the gullet and you get a little bit more uh, sort of flavor in your mouth, that uh, that's sort of where it turns sweet for me. But mm -hmm. uh, Dave, talk about your beer before we ignore you. Uh, what? <laughs> so Dave hasn't I'm shown tempted. up to the show yet. Um, Dave, we're, I was just asking, uh, what's so, the beer you're drinking? Tell us all about it. This is Invasion of the Blackberry Lager, is what this one's called. It's from Red Arrow. Okay. And it says on the label, look out. It's the Invasion of the Blackberries. An experiment gone wrong in the lab took over our brewmaster and the brewery. Then everything went black. So beware if thorn-covered arms try to reach out and take over your mind and your taste buds. Whoa, this sounds crazy. More than a few blackberries were harmed in the making of this beer. Unfiltered beer may contain sediment, may contain lactose. Is there sediment in this thing? Mm. Nah, not really. Well, I remember a few weeks back where we had that beer where there was a lot of sediment in one of our bottles, and then I didn't I have any at all. Had some yeah, that was going me. On. And I didn't have any at all, so I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah, um, I mean, yes, I guess you could say there's a little at the bottom, but it's a tiny, tiny amount, as near as I can tell. So, um, what... Uh, what what made you choose that beer? Just because you liked the label? Because you thought it would be interesting? It was a lager? Um... All of the above. And I don't... Have we done Red Arrow at this point? I'm not sure we yes, have. Yes, we have. We've yeah, done we've Red done Arrow, a couple. a couple of them, yeah. Okay. Not that one, however. Yeah. No, I was pretty sure we hadn't touched this one. But I thought, okay, it's lager, so at least I'm getting in the neighborhood of what you guys are doing. And yeah, I thought, uh, hey, yeah. blackberries could be interesting. As usual, blackberries are always interesting. Dave, I mean, when you really think know, about it, for, if you for, were to compare for, this, Dave, to to some of the other blackberry beers that we've had in the past, I, just thinking off the top of my head, we had the uh, the one from Cannery Brewing, um, well, probably a couple of years ago now, um, which was their blackberry porter. Uh, yeah. How would you compare it to that? Hmm. Honestly, I can't even remember the other one. So I couldn't tell you how it would compare. But um, I, I honestly don't know what I was expecting from this. But I'm enjoying it. This one is one of the easier drinking ones I think I've done. So tried. let me ask you this. If you were to rate the blackberry flavoring in it from one to 10, 10 being like tasting like blackberry juice and one sure. being no taste of blackberry at all, uh, what would you give it a rating at? I would have to give it like a two. Mm. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, it, Having said that, I'm not saying this is a bad beer. It's not a bad beer. It is a decent beer. I'm enjoying it. Again, okay. it's pretty it's pretty easy to, to drink. Uh as Locke likes to say, it is quaffable or eminently right. quaffable. Um mm -hmm. so as far as that goes, it's probably a good one for somebody who's not used to the whole craft beer scene and not sure what they're getting into. This one, I think, is a pretty safe one to get into if you're coming from all of the standards, the Coors, Labatt's, Buds, right. stuff like that. Um, you probably wouldn't find this a huge leap, and yet it would still be a huge leap in terms of something that actually is tasty. Right. Because it is. I'm enjoying it. Right. It, I, I can see you. You can, you can see the redness. Mm -hmm. in your glass there. I mean, the, just the coloring of it. I mean, although I'd say, see, colors are a little funky on the screen, but I'm going to say this is 
coming off a little more golden to me. Oh, okay. As opposed to a red. It could just be the lighting, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it does have a bit of red to it, but it's, I mean, it is quite a bit lighter than yours, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. So not as heavy. I guess closer. It just kind of goes to show that, I mean, there's all kinds of different uh, loggers. You know, there isn't just one way to make them. Um, there's a lot of different ones. And uh, so, you know, if you don't, if you don't think you're a fan of loggers, try different styles and, um, Definitely try ones from craft breweries um, and uh, see if you find something that you like. Uh, because I would definitely buy this uh, Vienna Amber Lager from Moody again. Uh, this is, uh, to me, not in the same ballpark. It's not even the same sport as uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Budweiser or whatever else. Uh, this is uh, in a league all, all its own. Mm, this is more like a man sport like Rugger. I suppose. <laughs> you, you, I'll take that as a no. Okay. Shane's like, what? <laughs> what drugs are you on, man? Uh, so, Alan, uh, it's sad that we missed the uh, the beer thing from the beer, the, the beer festival -y thing in Victoria. I thought you guys were yes. all set for that. Okay, so Shane and I uh, missed the uh, Christmas craft beer show. It was the third annual one. Um, and we missed it because Dave was a jerk. We missed it because we had other things going on. Um, and that is it true. Was it was uh, it was a little bit too difficult for us to go this year. Uh, we may try again next year. Now, uh, Shane, we did uh, discuss a couple of shows ago that the Vancouver uh, Beer Week, is, yeah, is, yeah, Beer Week was going to be offering ten dollar tickets to the first one hundred people calling every single day. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if we should uh, take advantage of that. Um. We could try. I mean, it's happening in uh, when is it? May. June. May it was June. June it was early June. Yeah. It, May thirty first, yeah. June 9th. Okay. So I mean, I, I'm not saying the whole show or the whole week or whatever, but I mean they have something that's similar to like a beer festival. That's sort of like a one day or two day thing where you go around at different booths and stuff like you know. Uh, like the craft, craft beer Christmas show or the uh, the Great Canadian Beer Festival, and I'd be totally into attending that uh, with you. Um, maybe Dave as well. I'm waiting for Dave to bail. Go, Dave! Come on, Dave! It's June eighth and ninth. I'm sure you could make it. <laughs> it's absolutely within the realm of the possible. Uh, tickets, I think, are. 30 bucks for which is actually fairly reasonable um just looking here yeah so yeah it looks like that um yeah and June how much are tokens did uh, it say uh, searching searching uh you get 10 drink tokens for your tickets oh really uh oh no wait sorry that is vip passes uh, uh so let's see they're probably a buck 50 each so it's the 10th anniversary blah blah blah, blah. it does oh tokens are two dollars and the beers are one token per four ounce sample so there you go so that's, uh, but that's yeah. the same as beer fest then Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, uh, I don't mind it. Um, so yeah, Dave, think about it and I hope everyone else goes and meets us there because we'll have yes. a booth. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have a booth. Oh, Hi, oh. do you like beer? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> what else do you like? Be beer? Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, bye. Yeah, I could totally like picture all of the conversations being like that. Um, so I just Shane, threw, you posted, I threw, 
Yeah, you posted a uh, an article here. Tell us about it. I, I put an article in the thing that I read this uh, earlier today, and uh, this is actually kind of interesting. In Thunder Bay, there is a barber shop that is offering beer while you wait for your haircut. <laughs> I'm just pointing out that I'm watching beer being inserted into a variety of different places uh, where you normally would not associate it uh, at all. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think that uh, it's a good idea uh, because, you know, Dave, I don't think ever gets his haircut. Um, I think, uh, Dave, Clearly. you you primarily just use bear attacks to keep your hair in check, right? <laughs> a bear attacks you, you freak out, your yes. hair falls out, you know, stuff like that. So I, I'm just checking. I mean, I, I'm assuming. Either that or they just gnaw on it because they're, they're really... Gnaw on your hair? Yeah, they're, okay. Yeah. So uh, that, that's the thing. So I'm trying to figure out how to work beer into everything that I do, because I think, how could it be bad? Like, I mean, really, when you think about it, how could that be a terrible, terrible plan? What could go wrong? I mean, <laughs> in any way, shape or form, offering beer for, you know, every client I have. Why not? Wait, is so the I understand free? you. Is the beer um, free? Well, that's a good question. I don't think so. Um, you get like tons of people coming in. I'd go. Nope, they sell it. Oh, they sell it. Uh, yeah, because he had to get a liquor license. Um, and he has more barbers coming online next year. Uh, Were they yeah, robots? Within, within Are they the year, robot I think. Barbers? I, I don't know. He's got Actually, them coming I, online? I, um actually it, it's it's interesting because i actually uh went and had a this is three four years ago now um and i went to a, a barber place downtown and you could get like the razor thing and put a hot towel on your face mm -hmm. and then you know give you a, uh the straight razor treatment um but we got to drink bourbon uh right before and right after so you basically got a a shot glass of bourbon right before and then you got a shot glass right afterwards so i was wondering if it actually you know thin the blood a bit so you bled more you know that kind of thing for more dramatic uh you know uh shave but um it was kind of fun i enjoyed it so you're visiting sweeney todd's were you mm. that's true that is true sweeney todd came and said hi and slip my throat <laughs> because why not that's got really better. grim i got better yeah exactly apparently this guy uh just as a little add-on here uh this fella is talking about adding in uh whiskeys and that kind of thing yeah which uh i i'm very supportive of because i don't know i mean here's the thing i think a lot of the minutia of life that we that we conduct or, or do or whatnot um is generally pretty boring you know you go to the store to buy food all right i went hi i went shopping <laughs> welcome to the crafty boys we went shopping to buy some vegetables <laughs> like it's not that exciting you know a, a lot of people do the same thing and there's nothing really outstanding to that particular thing um but, you know, you could actually make shopping for vegetables, getting your hair cut, getting a shave, uh, going to the bookstore would be my like favorite. Um, you know, and you walk in, you're like, ah, oh, geez, I'm here. Yeah, right on. I want to do the thing that I'm here for. But, oh, that beer really will make it far more interesting. So walking around with a pint, I don't know, it, like Alan, uh, you have kids that go to soccer and do that kind of stuff. Do you drink beer when you're there? Yep. Nope. <laughs> Did you say no, yeah? And then and then nope. No, I just said nope. Because you know I can see you totally pulling off like a uh, a tailgate party at every practice. Um, right. So uh, you know. no, um, I do know of people in other youth sports organizations that have done that. And he's um, saying absolutely nothing more. I, I was I was wondering, Alan, what other sports might these be? 
No, they're they're the same sports. They're just different organizations. What organization are you a part of that does this? I'm not a part of any organization that does this. I just know that there are some organizations where parents have done this kind of thing. So, Alan, you have never done this at any particular style of sporting event practice ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, so basically, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It sounds pretty sketchy at these soccer practices. Actually, you know, I remember going to soccer practice for years and years and years and years and years. That's a long practice. And yeah, it was uh, just, it never stopped. I think I hit puberty during the practice. So, uh, but I, I do recall that there were definitely parents that hung around, especially when it was cold. And uh, there was one time where a parent showed up with their, their pickup truck and they had like one of those abaches in the back and they were cooking food. Yeah. So that, you know, were I a parent, that's what I would do. I would be the, I would be that dad, you know, I'd be like showing up with like, you know, a case of beer. That, that and, does you know, happen. Just like start cooking like steak on a, on a small, you know, thing and being like, yo, parents, who's here? What do you want? You want a beer? You want a beer? You want a beer? Hey, who's who wants a steak? I got dogs, too. Dogs? No. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I, I'm going to say I'd be the cool dad. Yeah. Of course, you know, any children that I ever create would be, you know, they'd grow up all messed up and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd have like seven arms, six legs. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they might like opera. Um, Alan, uh, Dave, Al, you're not Alan. Dave just put a little thing in here. The Christmas classic. Okay. We're going to talk about this. God damn it. We, I, I guess right. we're going to talk about it. the Christmas classic baby. It's cold outside, uh, is, uh, getting me too. So, yes. um, it got me too last year too. Dave, Dave, you brought this up. Did it tell, tell us more about it? Why did you bring I, this I up? Just thought it was goofy. That's all. Why do you it, think it's it, goofy? Because, come on, seriously? The whole thing is being taken out of context. It, it totally is. I, I, I would agree. I, I, think, I think part of the problem is that the, <clears throat> the context in the song is misunderstood by millennials yes today yeah where they uh, yeah, they think it is specifically the line where she says you know what's in this drink you know they ah. millennials think that means date rate drug and it's just you know it's what people said back then because they didn't you know especially women didn't drink as much they're like oh what's in this oh. yeah as you in know. what is it exactly I mean, I, know. I mean, the, yeah, exactly. And and the context of the song, if you actually know where the song came from, which is was written and, you know, kind of won Academy Awards and stuff. Um, but the the Eight, song, I believe, to be exact, uh, something like that. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, uh, was sung by Con. Um, <laughs> but uh, Ricardo Montalban was in the film and he sung the song with the uh, the other actor who I can't remember who that was, but I'm sure she was famous. Um, but essentially, yeah, no, it, it, the song, the, the context of the song and as it was written was about how this uh, woman wanted to stay over with her new beau and uh, but was afraid of society's judgment upon her uh, because, you know, women don't do that, uh, that sort of thing. So if you think of the actual point of the song and, and and the intention for which it was created uh you would understand that oh okay so she actually she does want to stay but she's not worried about him she's worried about what people will think if you know tomorrow morning she walks out uh you know the, well, you're not married what's wrong with you that kind of thing so yeah, yeah. so but yeah. we're currently living in that um I don't know what to call it. Uh, be afraid. Be very afraid. 
be you want to call yeah, where we should be why should we be afraid that's um the phrase <laughs> I, uh, you know what i don't even want to talk about it that's like i don't <laughs> even i have no opinion like you have no opinion at all none like, i'm not touching it with a 10 foot pole well i guess i guess just to summarize it to summarize my opinion is that the song was written uh, it means something completely different than what people are interpreting it as in this day and age with our 21st yep. century eyeballs. Um, and for some reason, people are doing the thing because because here's the thing. I honestly, I don't care if I want to listen to the song. I'm going to go listen to it. If people don't want to hear it on the radio or whatever bullshit that is fine, because it's not about the song it to me it's more about the censorship that, that we have these organizations which by the way i'm pretty convinced that the cbc cutting it from their playlist is actually a violation of their charter because they're publicly funded they're not technically allowed to commit censorship so mm -hmm. i think there could be a case to be made because they are a publicly funded entity and they're not supposed to do that but again Who's going to really put up a fuss and you know look at their uh, you know their charter? So, um, but anyway, um, I mean, this the censorship doesn't work. I mean, that's that's the reality is that we know that censorship and the blocking of content and all these sorts of things that we see in the digital age don't work. People, if they want access to things, they will find access to things. And I think it's a very again you know the the slippery slope argument that which people looking at this particular song might not, might go, yeah, whatever, um, which is kind of how I react to it. But it's not necessarily something that I think uh, we should take lightly. I think it's actually something that we should, you know, watch very closely because it could be this song this year, um, but it could be something else next year. It could be, but it could be worse. You know, it could be something where somebody like, I'm saying, hey, settle down. The song is not about what you think it is. Uh, it was written and it was performed and it was about something else. Um, so if you either do your history check and actually, you know, read about it, um, then you're OK. However, me saying that, of course, is somebody is going to be like, oh, fuck you, Burley, you're an asshole. So whatever. Fine. You think I'm an asshole. I don't really care what you think of me. And uh uh, eh. so there you go on that note nice um thanks dave for bringing us down uh on yeah. that note i actually forgot to start the timer so i don't know how long we've been going but um but i think uh yeah so uh what is your greatest Christmas wish for 2018? Dave, I want to start with you. Oh, boy. Hmm. Come on, Dave. Let's hear it, Dave. Come on, Dave. Make it happen, Dave. Tell us, Dave. What do you... Whiskey. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, whiskey? <laughs> okay. All right. I, I could buy that. All right. Um, that's it. That's all you have to say. Hey, that Dave, great. Shane's going to buy you whiskey. I have had to forego it for a long time. Forego whiskey? My guts. I uh, have a bottle so you, sitting on my shelf in its box. Let's, let's show, show the box. Show the box. Show the box. Okay. Hang on. I want to see. I want to see what, what kind of a man you are. Are you a, uh, like a Glenn Fittick kind of guy? It's not, it's not super fancy. It's not super. Oh, it's fancy. good. It's good. Living there, you go. Two hundred dollar freaking bottle, but it's a twelve year. How old is that bottle? Uh, I'm going to say a good three, four years at this point. So it's like fifteen years old. Yes, I gotta say, man, that's gonna be good. When uh, yes, are you actually? Is. Are you really gonna yes, crack it, it open this year? Are you actually gonna make it happen? I don't know. I I would like to. And maybe perhaps I will make that happen this year just because. But I have to be careful. As I say, my guts, I'm not a huge fan of this stuff anymore. So, ah, well, you know. All right, moving on to you, Alan. What is your Christmas wish for 2018? $10 billion. And, or <clears throat> world domination, one or the other. <laughs> just, just small. 
small wishes, like little <laughs> little you tiny requests. Domination. <laughs> One million dollars. Um, How about you, Shane? I want sanity in society. I think that's my my biggest wish. I mean, the only reason I'm thinking about it is because of the baby. It's cold outside. Thanks, Dave. No. Um, you know, if I had world I mean, domination, I'd force it to be sane. Yeah, that that too. I mean, you know, we, we're gonna have nice. um, done. Okay. Was, I mean, <laughs> I I really appreciate. And actually, I remember having a conversation last Christmas with somebody in Victoria who shall remain nameless, um, who just shut me down like right off the bat about how dare I want to do this, that, and the other thing for whatever, whatever it was about the me too movement and uh, i was just saying that we should have you know i i support what's going on i just think that we need to make sure the due process is followed and that we don't become like some sort of hysterical state that you know strings people up and if they float in the water they're a witch or whatever yeah, yeah. um you know because i mean that's that's i mean we're actually seeing that already i mean a lot of that's going on um you know not in the same way obviously but it, but it is happening and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of due process going on, which is great. Um, but this knee jerk reaction stuff, I'd not, I'm not on board with because I don't think it is healthy for people to do that because to me, it is the internet manifesting itself in the real world. And I think that's a scary, scary thing. Um, because a lot of, organizations and people seem to be okay with it and i i don't know i i'm not a fan so yeah i'm you brought us down dave thanks for that so until next week boys and girls uh mm, who's picking the beer this week it's probably this guy um and i know exactly what i want i totally do but you'll have to come back next week and find out so uh dave get naked and Alan, take us out.